He said, well, if I ask myself, why am I doomed to live in this destitute poverty that I was born into, my life would have come out one way. On the other hand, I asked myself, how could I create wealth and prosperity for other people that would then lead to prosperity for me and my family uh, by creating value for others? And based on that one question, it sent my life in a completely different direction. And as, as I would go back and we would go visit West Virginia, I would see that it, it was the people there were almost under a spell. It was a screen by which they saw the world. And my, my grandfather, even though he got us out of the coal mines, uh, he definitely had that screen that money was evil, uh, that people that had money were greedy, uh, that the only way to get money and get ahead in the world was to steal it and hurt other people. Uh, and he died holding on, to, holding on to those beliefs. How do you think back to your grandfather? Like, how do you think of him now, knowing what you know? Obviously, it, you know, it's a little easier in hindsight. Yeah, you know, I, boy, that's a great question. Um, by the time I ended, I, I, I felt a little bit of resentment at my grandfather uh, when I started to write the beginning of the book. Uh, he came to visit us in Cincinnati only one time. It was August. It was hot and humid. He came, he came to the house, he came inside. We lived in a house, maybe 1,800 square feet house. And uh, he came in and the first thing he said, he looked at my dad and he said, how many people did you have to rip off to get this house? And my dad wanted him to be proud of him. He had worked so hard to build a business and to take care of his family. And and my dad said to him, I'll never forget, he said, George, I worked really hard to help a lot of people and to fight for my family and create a, a loving, caring home for them. Uh, and, my, and my grandfather, he could not see it. It was like he was from a different dimension. He said, well, tell yourself whatever you need to so that you can sleep, but I guess you think you're a big shot now. And they argued for about five minutes, it got heated. My grandpa got back in the car he drove back to West Virginia uh, after only being in the house for about 10 minutes. And three months later, uh, my grandpa George died alone in his house, um, a victim of the chemicals and the coal mines that he had breathed all of his life. But by the end of the book, I saw that he had laid the foundation to, to at least give my dad an opportunity to get out. You know, he worked in those coal mines from the time he was in fifth grade till he was in uh, out, of, out of high school. He never, he could not get, but he was really smart. He was really well read. He worked at Union Carbide for 25 years to take care of his family. So he never really experienced the American dream himself, but he, re, he gave my dad and me the opportunity that we could see further and go further uh, than he did.